Welcome back for day two of the summit. I hope you enjoyed our day one discussions. I still can't believe that we got to hear from astronaut Caleb Barron, Secretary of Energy Jennifer Granholm, and GM CEO Mary Barra all in the same day. And we also heard from our distinguished and expert panelists and you through the community brainstorms. So many innovative but practical ideas lending to a roadmap to secure a robust domestic battery supply chain. It feels like this is a goal that's very much within our reach. Special thanks to this morning's keynote speakers, Danny D. Kennedy, Congressman Foster, and Chair Hochschild for those inspiring remarks. And I'd like to add my own thanks as well to, Ken, to Danny for the many year partnership with New Energy Nexus, and also to Slack and Lawrence Livermore National Lab, especially Steve Eglash and Tony Van Buren, our partners for the second day of the summit. And as some of you may remember, the annual Bay Area Battery Summit grew out of an idea about a decade ago from Venkat Srinivasan, who is now the director of the Argonne Collaborative Center for Energy Storage Science and the deputy director for our Joint Center for Energy Storage Research. But he began his national lab career here at Berkeley Lab. Even though our three labs are national in scope, our special relationship with the University of California and Stanford afford unprecedented cross-fertilization among students and faculty and researchers. As part of the Bay Area's research and development community, Berkeley, Slack, and Livermore have played a critical role in California's leadership in clean energy and energy storage procurement and installation. We have partnerships across the state's 150 plus energy storage companies and research institutions, and our proximity to Silicon Valley's innovation ecosystem means that the high-tech entrepreneurs can access our user facilities and our experts, where they can de-risk their technologies before moving on to the next step of development. Here at Berkeley Lab, we cover the entire range from science to systems, and we stand by as a national resource to support your energy storage work. So let's talk about today. Like you heard me say yesterday, day two is really where we're gonna get down to the work of building more partnerships within the energy storage ecosystem. We've intentionally embedded time on the agenda to facilitate connections between attendees in order to catalyze those new partnerships and your solutions to accelerate impact. So that you can see what this means, let me share that we have a total of 2,141 registrants. Over 800 of you hail from industry, nearly 700 from government in the national labs, and over 400 from academia. We also have about 60 from the finance, venture capital sector, and same number from the utilities. And I'm just so thrilled that this is a, a diverse group. So it's a great time to reach across disciplinary silos and make those connections. So first off today, you're gonna to hear from the Department of Energy's Under Secretary for Science and Innovation, Dr. Jerry Richmond. As a longtime champion of the DOE National Labs, Dr. Richmond is really the perfect person to tell us all about the transformational role that DOE's 17 National Labs can play and how they can support you in your own solution space. In fact, through DOE's Energy Storage Grand Challenge, the labs have come together to coordinate on storage including an ongoing initiative to build out the online DOE lab partnering service website with much more information about energy storage. Check out a link with more info in the chat to find one more way that you can plug into the national labs to accelerate your impact. Each lab has different points of entry. For Berkeley Lab, feel free to reach out through me and our energy storage center for potential connections. Then moving on down the agenda, I did promise that today would be your chance to geek out. Maybe the day's theme was your first clue about this, accelerating discovery to deployment of energy storage for decarbonization and resilience. So with climate change as a driving force, the Biden administration has set the goal of 100% clean power grid by 2035 and a clean economy by 2050. We know that energy storage is a linchpin in the solution space, but that does not mean it's gonna be an easy road. And today we're not focused just on batteries, like Danny said. We're embracing the wide scope of energy storage, everything from electrochemical storage, including batteries, flow batteries, to thermal energy storage, both low and high temperature, to chemical energy storage, which of course includes hydrogen, to mechanical energy storage, such as compressed air energy storage or pump storage hydropower. And just like yesterday, we have two cross-cutting themes of equity and workforce that you're gonna hear embedded in all the discussions. So at this point in the agenda, we're gonna to get to a session that we've called Getting From Here to There. We've taken a page out of the DOE Energy Storage Grand Challenge Roadmap to focus our discussion on five major end uses or use cases for energy storage. The evolving grid, transportation, resilience, buildings, and energy intense industry. 
First, you're going to hear a three minute lightning talk from national lab experts on each of these use cases to lay out the major challenges of decarbonizing these sectors and the opportunities for energy storage. And then here's the fun part. You're going to get a chance to choose your own adventure and select which of the expert concurrent panels you'd like to attend to further explore the opportunities for energy storage. And of course, there will be Q&A as part of that. At the midpoint of the day, we're going to hear from our Pitch Fest finalists who competed to earn their spot in this National Energy Storage Summit session. This is a really impressive group with researchers hailing from startups, universities, and national labs. Each speaker will propose exciting solutions to challenges discussed in the previous session. Then we're going to count on you, our audience, to be the judges and to select the winners of our awards for the best presentation and the best idea. Next is one of my favorite sessions of the day, the collaboration cycles. Aligned with our theme of catalyzing partnerships and accelerating your ideas and solutions, we'll be accepting proposals to a $20,000 collaboration seed fund after the summit. And one of the eligibility requirements is that you've made new connections during the summit to partner with. And this is the perfect session to make those connections. There's two ways to leverage the collaboration cycle sessions. You can either take up to three 15 minute one-on-one -on -one meetings with other summit goers, or you can join one of our expert roundtables to learn, to discuss, network, and ask questions. You're gonna find the list of all seven roundtable topics on the program page on the left, including one on artificial intelligence and machine learning, one on battery recycling, and many more. So our morning will be spent on S&T and markets, two legs of our deployment stool, but this discussion would not be complete without hearing from the policymakers, a third and critical leg as well. Our panel of policy experts represents federal and state regulators and legislators who are gonna look at how their work can increase the domestic reach of energy storage. And we're gonna have a show of support from the co-chairs of the Congressional Energy Storage Caucus, Congressman Mark Decano and John Curtis as well. And then in our final session, we're gonna hand the mic back over to you for our day two community brainstorming session, where you're gonna get the chance to mull over and recommend near and long-term actions that could accelerate the deployment of energy storage solutions and to determine our next steps in forging this ecosystem we need for each use case in order to accelerate energy storage science to deployment. We can't wait to hear all of your exciting ideas for this. So I hope you're as excited as I am about today. I'll see you back here in just a few hours. And now let me turn over the virtual stage to the woman who may have the best title ever, Dr. Jerry Richmond, the Undersecretary for Science and Innovation at the Department of Energy. Thank you.